Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I decided, you know what? I have over 5,000 of you here now. It is about time I do a Q&A. So I hopped onto my Instagram story and my community tab here on YouTube and I told you guys to ask me all the questions and questions you guys had. Let's go on to my community tab first because that is where I had um, the least amount of questions. All right, so first question, and I got this several times, is what do you and your hubby do for day jobs? So um, I work Monday through Friday, eight to five, and I am an accountant. Um, I've been an accountant at this company for just about six years, and I really honestly do love my job. I love being an accountant, and I love working with numbers, and the people that I work with are super, super amazing as well. Um, they have become like my work family. My husband works for a local construction company, um, and they do insulation, so like they install insulation on walls and things like that, and he is the scheduler, and he like communicates I don't know, I guess like he's kind of like a project coordinator, something, I don't know. He's always on the phone with like contractors and things like that for like big apartment buildings, residential buildings, um, and things like that. So they do like spray foam and like bat in insulation and he coordinates the schedule for all of their jobs. My poor husband works like 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. every single day. We are busy, busy bees. And we also on the side, um, we do a little bit of a furniture business. It's like a custom style, like farmhouse industrial style um, furniture business. We're working on getting a website up so that you guys can start shopping some of our items as well. So stay tuned for that. So we are pretty booked up between those two things. M&M Rustics, we probably put like a good 80 plus hours into that a week with our kids. So yes, we're very, very busy. We like it chaotic. So yes, we have quite the full schedule. And on top of that, I decided I was gonna start um, YouTube as well. <laughs> so we're just a little crazy. We like it crazy. <laughs> Next question is, what is the meaning of your tattoo on your arm? So this guy right here, this tattoo right here, I got with my sister, um, also a very splotchy self tan going on here. So um, no touching. <laughs> Okay, so this tattoo on my arm here is four little arrows, um, and this represents each of my siblings. I have four siblings. I am the oldest, and my youngest sibling is seven. Um, so one stands for Bryn, Lainey, Kenna, and Cole, all of my siblings. I have three sisters and a brother. And like I said, my sister has this tattoo with me. We really want my brother to get this tattoo as well because he's the only other one that's over 18. Um, and then the two youngest ones, maybe eventually we'll get the tattoo as well. All right, so next question is, um, how do you find me slash hobby time when raising ki two kiddos? I was just telling Mike um, earlier tonight, actually, I told him that, you know, we really need to slow down between all of our jobs. You know, I am, bringing the kids to daycare every single morning and drop and picking them up. And then as soon as I get home, I'm pumping while I'm making dinner. And after dinner, um, Mike's just in the shop the whole time. He's usually out there until like 10 to midnight every single night working on orders. And it's just gotten so crazy. So I would say we really need to work on this part. Mike and I need to make more us time we need to allow ourselves to go on dates or have family nights down here like in the basement and have like snacks and movies things like that that is something that we definitely need to work on um we've just been so focused the past few years on like building our future and bettering our family's lives um but right now it, you know we're definitely noticing that we do need more me time so to be honest with you i need to work on that one a little bit but um, I do have a really fun mommy nighttime pamper routine coming up for you because that is the one way I can get a little bit of me time in. Um, sometimes I'll go get my nails done. I like to get my nails dipped. It's my favorite thing for my nails is to get them dipped and I usually just do all white. I get a lot of questions as to what color I put on my nails. All white, just plain white acrylic dip powder. Um, I get my lashes done every three or four weeks and I um, like to do a pamper routine once a week where I do like self tanner. I exfoliate my body all the way prior to like self tanning and um, I do like masks and I use like all of the serums and all the good stuff. But 
that's how I get a, a little bit of like mommy me time. And I have that pamper routine coming up for you guys next Tuesday. Next question is, do you and your husband have different parenting styles? If so, how do you overcome it? Also, what's the hardest thing you've overcome since being a mother? I would say, first off, the hardest thing that I've ever overcome since being a mother, I would say my breastfeeding experience both times has been um, one of the hardest things that I've had to do, as well as leaving them for the first time when they go to daycare. That's always really, really hard, your first day away after maternity leave. Learning to parent a toddler, um, and we, want to make sure that the parenting style we're enforcing is um, positive. We believe in positive reinforcement. We're very much so helicopter parents. Um, and like learning to pick and choose our battles, it's all been really big struggles for us and we're just kind of feeling it out along the way. We're learning along the way. Um, so this kind of ties into that other question is, um, do you and your husband have different parenting styles? If so, how do you overcome it? So Mike and I are very similar in the fact that we have like the same goal for Kaya. So we, you know, want her to be a good person. We want her to succeed in life and still hang on to that independency and that stubbornness. We we feel that that's really good for a woman to possess in the future so we definitely want to encourage those behaviors but underneath our guidelines so we have the same goal but the way that we get there mm, is a little bit different i guess the way that we overcome it is maybe biting our tongues a little bit i'm more so like a go with the flow pick and choose your battles because you really can't like fight with her on everything a toddler is not going to agree with you 100 percent of the time so and my husband will, you know, very much so want to correct everything she does, which isn't, that's not a bad parenting style. But for Kaya, you know, the just between the two parenting styles, it's been, it's been working for her. We do still, you know, obviously struggle um, with seeing eye to eye on certain things. But like I said, as, as long as like at the end of the day, like you want the same things for your kids. As long as you guys have like the same big picture in mind as far as how you want your kiddos to act and what's best for them, etc., then, you know, that's what's really going to matter. I don't feel that everybody's going to agree 100% on um, parenting because each parent is their own individual and they have their own way of experimenting with things. So you're not always going to see eye to eye, but that's okay. It's totally normal. Um, and I guess my husband and I, we just, we push through it and we try not to argue about the way that we're parenting, especially in front of Kaya. We will never correct each other in front of Kaya because otherwise she thinks that she can just get away with anything. <laughs> Any tips on how to share the load with an infant in the night or daytime? So this one's a really hard one for me actually because I take the brunt of the load just because my husband is so busy in the shop working on M&M rustic orders that it's really hard for him to help me and he has to wake up at like 4 30 in the morning to get to work by 5 5 30 so I'm really the one who's taking care of both of the kids at this point in time um we've only had Riker for a couple months so again we're just kind of learning our way through it probably once things settle down here um after we're done with these crazy big orders with our business mike will more than likely be helping a little bit more at night and um will be helping me cook dinner and things like that if i could suggest anything is you know if one person is taking the kids to daycare have the other pick them up and if that's not possible you know like for me right now i'm picking them up and dropping them off then when you get home, maybe have hubby like help you with dinner, help make dinner and do the dishes or help get the kids in the bath and get their jammies set out. Whatever you need to do to get through it, get through the daily routine and stay sane. That's my best advice. And it's going to be so different for each person. But for me, so on a day where Mike could be helping me out, like I said, you know, maybe he picks up the kids that night. I get to go straight home, have five minutes of mom's end time before the kids come home. And then maybe I can start dinner. And then once I've started dinner, have him do the dishes. And then once we're all done, he can take one kid. I can take the other, give them baths, showers, whatever they want, you know, get their jammies on, get them into bed. And then, you know, 
go to bed. At night when my husband and I do share the load, usually I do not pump in the middle of the night. I'll save that all for my morning pump, which I've tried pumping in the middle of the night, by the way, you guys, um, and that does take away from my morning pump. I tried it two nights ago, and it significantly decreased my morning pump, my first time morning pump. So anyways, my husband will take like a bag of milk usually, heat it up in um, the bottle warmer, and he'll give me the bottle, I'll give Riker the bottle, and I'll stay up with Riker until he's done with the bottle. That's kind of like how we split it up when he is able to be awake. Um, or like I said, sometimes we do have to supplement with formula in the middle of the night. Mike will grab me like two ounces of water and then um, bring it back to me and he'll make sure that it's warm. I'll add the formula, I'll shake it up, mix it up, give him the bottle, and I'll stay up with him until he's done. So just really like try to 50-50 it. Or if you're breastfeeding, breastfeed baby in the middle of the night, hand baby off to daddy to get his his or her bum changed. That's another really good trade-off that I've seen in the past. How did you budget before you had a baby? I wanna make sure I'm in a good place before I have my first and I just need a few tips. Okay, so the way that my husband and I prepared for like having a baby and budgeting for baby is we looked at our finances, we looked at our income, we looked at all of our expenses at the time, and we looked at how much we had left over. Um, with the, that amount that we had left over, um, we started subtracting out the things that we knew um, we would have to pay for with a baby. So like 600 for daycare, about $100 in formula a month, um, like $60 in diapers, $20 in wipes. Very general. I know that there's more expenses, health bills, etc. Um, but that's just what we had figured for baby expenses. And we made sure that we were left over with a comfortable amount. And a comfortable amount for us could be something that's very different for what's comfortable for you. Okay, next question is, is it best to serve your newborn um, warm or cold milk? I'm about to have my first baby boy in August and I'm hearing mixed things about it. Um, I always serve Riker room temp or warmed milk because he makes the craziest face and absolutely like refuses cold milk. I'm sure every baby is different, but I think it's pretty normal for moms to serve room temp or warmer milk. The next question is how long were you married for before you had a baby? So Mike and I have been together, t this year is like our five year tenure. So we've been married as of August, five years and as of August or September, we'll have been um, together for 10 years. We started trying for um, our first baby right away as soon as we got married and we had been together at that point for five years and we were married for just a few months by the time that I had gotten pregnant. We got married in August and found out we were expecting in January of the next year. Um, and then we had Kaya, our firstborn, our daughter. Um, she was born in September of 2015. So married August 2014, Kaya was born uh, um, September 30th of 2015. So just barely over a year later, we had our first baby. And now Kaya, let's see, like I said, Riker was just born and Kaya is three and a half and we'll be married five years this year. So we, we spaced them out a little bit. All right, moving on to my Instagram. I had to take screenshots of all of them. So, um, first one is not juicy, but what's your Starbucks order? All the good things. I'm like thinking of like my top five favorites right now. Um, recently, I've really actually been liking the Cloud Macchiato, which gets a ton of hate, but like I love foam. I really like foam. So I get like sh the sugar-free version or like as sugar-free as possible. Um, and then I also ask for like the dairy free option. Um, I don't know if that foam is dairy free, but anyways, regardless, it's delicious. If I'm trying to go really healthy, I'll just get like a nice coffee with cream and um, two pumps of sugar free vanilla. Sometimes I'll get coconut milk, sometimes I'll get the soy milk, um, but those are both pretty high in sugar. So I try to stay away from those um, and then tell them to go light on the heavy cream. Um, when I was diehard keto, I would have this iced coffee like every single day, um, but I've been trying to wean off of it and I've been loving, loving. I get like the Starbucks containers um, that you can like buy from the grocery stores. So it's just like literally Starbucks coffee in like a container that's refrigerated. I love it. My Keurig is nothing compared to it now. Um, and I just put a little bit of ice in that. It's already cold, but I just like it really cold. So I'll put ice cubes in it and then I'll do unsweetened vanilla um, almond milk. 
so good, sugar-free, dairy-free, it's delicious, very creamy, you gotta try it. All right, so at home, the Starbucks iced coffee, and then in stores, the Cloud Macchiato, um, or a regular iced coffee. I do love the caramel macchiatos as well. Sometimes if I'm feeling really naughty um, during the holiday season, I will get the peppermint mocha frappuccino. How much weight did you lose at, after pregnancy and how long did it take you? I lost 42 pounds in the first two weeks. So I had gained 42 pounds, lost all of it in two weeks. Um, and I was already curvier beforehand. I was probably like well, like I said, I have like a good 60 pounds to lose right now before I'm at like a really, really like spot on like goal weight for myself. Um, so pregnancy weight, lost it all within a couple of weeks. The rest of like the extra fluff that I've gained over the years and like from having my first daughter who I gained like 100 pounds with and only lost like 60 of it. Um, I still have like that lingering 40 pounds plus like the extra fluff of 20. Um, that I gained after my wedding and trying to get pregnant and whatever. So I have like 60 pounds left to lose, but I did lose 42 right after having Riker within two weeks. What is your advice for someone who is 25 weeks pregnant with her first baby? I would say congratulations first off because that's super exciting. I remember like just waiting to meet Kaya for the first time and like imagining who she would look like. Like that's the best part of pregnancy is that like, surprise factor and like wondering and like who is he or she going to look like um, I would also tell you that you are going to have the best time of your life coming up it's going to be very hard but it's going to be so much fun the one thing that I would tell you out of like everything is just you are about to experience one of the most amazing things in your life. You're not going to understand what life was without this new little human being in your life. It is going to change you inside and out and it's going to be like having your heart duplicated and living outside of your body. And it's the most overwhelmingly happy feeling in the world. There, <laughs> I had to take a break there and get yeah. some chocolate. Now I have a little guest with me as well. Next question. How is baby number two different from when you were a first time mom? Um, I don't know. I don't feel like it was like a ton different because my routine stayed the same. I would say my heart doubled like the Grinch. We've been watching the Grinch a lot lately. My heart just grew even more and it just brought me so much joy watching my children interact, like watching Kaya meet her brother for the first time. I still bawl every time I watch that video. I'll be sure that I have that linked up here for you guys. Also, when having Riker this time, I just, I felt like I knew what I was doing a lot more. I knew what worked, what didn't work. And I knew that I wanted to breastfeed for as long as possible this time because of our struggles with Kaya switching her to formula. So this time I did everything in my power to make sure that my milk supply stayed at a somewhat sustainable level. Next question is how did you know you were ready for baby number two? Um, Kaya was about two and a half um, or like two when we decided that we were ready for baby number, th baby number three, what the heck, baby number two. Um, but we went to Mexico in February and you have to wait at least six months after um, going to Mexico or like, you know, being exposed to like a Zika zone before you can like start trying. So um, we had a little bit of an oopsie in May and that is how Riker came about. <laughs> so um, we were planning on trying like after that six month waiting period anyways. So. It wasn't like a huge deal. We were already planning on having another baby anyways. It just made me very anxious knowing that it was within like that six month um, like potential like danger zone. So yeah, we, I just feel, we just were ready. I don't know. We just knew after Kaya became a little bit more independent. Next question, are you done having kids? If not, do you plan to have your next close at age? Um, so I feel like I kind of answered this before. It's baby so number three is day. coming. Now I kind of want them a little bit closer this time. Um, financially, that is definitely something that we're not ready for is baby number three. As soon as we are financially ready for baby number three, I'll tell you that he or she will definitely be coming, God willing. Um, I, this time around, just feel like I want my kids a little bit closer. I don't necessarily want two toddlers at once. Um, 
but at the same time I would really love to have you know all three of my kids pretty close in age I think we want three kids maybe four I told Mike I always like I always wanted to have three kids and then maybe have a straggler later on but now after my body has been through what it's been through with my pregnancies and like just that my skin doesn't recover like my skin just never sucks back in I in order to get rid of my like baby skin that just hangs, I'm going to have to have a tummy tuck eventually just to get rid of the extra skin. I wasn't blessed with super great genetics and even with like a lot of working out, um, my doctors told me it just probably isn't something that's going to happen for me, which I've accepted that's totally fine. The price is worth being paid for having beautiful angels come here on this earth that are a piece of my heart. So, but anyway, um, I don't know, three kids, maybe four kids. I guess we will see, won't we? We'll find out soon. You guys will know. Next question is, any tips for a working mom on how to stay positive and not have too much mom guilt? Oh, this is such a good question. This is really hard. Um, I have mom guilt all the time. Oh my gosh, I'm like starting to tear up. I have mom guilt all the time. You know, I imagine myself you know, sitting in my office at work. And like I said, I work eight to five, Monday through Friday, so I am away from him a lot. Um, I do feel really good that he has amazing caregivers lined up. Right now he's with grandpa, and then he's going to be with um, like an in-between daycare until our current um, preschool for Kaya. It's actually a family member of mine. Um, until she has an opening for Riker and I just I trust her with my whole heart. I love her. She's an amazing human being inside and out. So that really helps when you have really good care for your kids while you're working. That definitely helps. Okay, next question is, let's see. What is your 9 to 5 job? Okay. Oh, and what made you start YouTube? What made you want to start YouTube? So I am such a YouTube nerd. I not only make content, but I also follow a lot of mommy creators here on YouTube. Um, I just, there's something to be said about YouTube. Oh, here I'm getting all emotional again. Ugh, somebody, meh. There is something to be said about YouTube. It is such a unique community and you feel, it's, it's so much different than like watching TV because it, it, I just feel like YouTube is so authentic or it can be so authentic depending on the creator. Um, YouTube is so authentic and it's even better than like reality TV and it is just the most amazing community. Being able to like reach out to the creator themselves and engage with them, you know, via the comments or the community tab or even following them on Instagram. It's just you really feel like you, you know, you're not alone, um, especially in, you know, in this mom YouTube community, you feel like you're not alone and that you have this like community of friends, um, that you can reach out to and, you know, you can, you can find comfort in seeing that somebody, even if you're both suffering the same things, there's almost comfort in that seeing that, you know, you know, you're not the only one going through what you're going through is there's something to be said about that. That is why I started YouTube is because I love connecting with people and at the time when I started YouTube I was one of the only people out of my friend group that had kids and you know now which is really exciting I have a lot of my friends you know becoming pregnant now and having kids and I, it's really exciting but at the time when I first started you know this idea of doing a mama YouTube channel I was I was kind of on my own. I had one other friend who had a baby and, and that was pretty much it. I I guess I started creating my videos because I wanted to share what it's like to really be a hot mess. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I, I don't know. I just, I feel like what my life is like is so relatable. There's so many mamas out there and I wanted to be an inspiration to those who, you know, maybe are struggling um, with the same things I'm struggling with. And I wanted to share my tips and tricks and what works for me and just join in on the YouTube community because like I said, I've been watching YouTube for so long um, and I just feel like I had a lot to offer when it came to sharing my own videos and I really, really love making content. I've been making content actually for like, like four years now actually um but i have deleted channels like that had like 30 views a video i mean it was just like 
little vlogging channels or like private channels or I made like videos for our Mexico trip and things like that. If you guys ever want to see any of those videos, let me know because I've got some gems. Um, I just, I don't know. I'm just such a nerd. I really love talking to a camera, I guess. It's kind of therapeutic and, and the community is amazing. Um, oh, my sweet friend Lena. Okay, how do you find motivation to do as many things as you do and to do them? Well, at that, you are so sweet, Lita. I love you. Um, okay, so the way we live our lives is pretty chaotic, I'm going to admit. I was just telling Mike earlier tonight that we really need to slow things down a little bit, focus in on more family time, more me time, if you will, like the slowing down time. Mike and I, we're such entrepreneurial people. We really love our eight to five jobs, you know, because they're very solid jobs and we love what we do there. Um, we just, you know, we had originally started M&M Rustics, you know, just for a little bit of side money to be able to pay off debt, um, which I think is a really great idea for anybody is to start up a side business to maybe pay off your debt, put some money into savings, start saving up for bigger things or like trips, things like that, you know, not necessarily to replace your nine to five, your eight to five, um, but just something to put like a little extra change in your pocket and it definitely helps when you have kids. Um, we're very happy if we're able to make enough money with our side businesses to cover daycare for the month, which is very expensive. That's why we've started all of these side hustles. YouTube for me is very much so just a hobby right now and it has blown up just recently in the past couple months and <laughs> I'm gonna start crying. Um, I love YouTube and it's always been a dream of mine to do YouTube. Um, and I remember telling Mike that one day you just wait, <laughs> I'm going to make it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I am going to make videos and I'm going to inspire other moms and women out there and I'm going to have an amazing community. And here I am five months into it and I'm already doing it. And <laughs> why am I crying? I'm very emotional tonight, you guys, but really, but really honestly, YouTube has always been like a really big dream of mine and it feels surreal that it's like happening and I've worked really hard to get here and, um, yeah. Okay. Well, that went off on a little tangent, but, um, but yeah, so thank you to each and every one of you who has subscribed to my channel and has joined in on my hot mess mama videos. Um, I truly wouldn't be here without you guys um, and I wouldn't have had the growth that I've had so far without you guys so thank you. I don't know. I don't know how we're, how we're good at these things. We just we work really hard and we have the same goal in the future. You know Mike and I both are working so hard together just to make sure that we can provide the lives that we want for ourselves and our and our kids and that's really what it comes down to is just having the best life and future for ourselves and our family. <laughs> when do you transition baby to crib? So Kaya was always in her own crib, but in our room. And um, that was, we were living in a townhome at the time. Oh, I loved that little townhome. Um, oh, I loved it so much. But anyways, oh God, I get sidetracked so easy. Kaya was in her crib um, from day one and she did really, really well in it. Riker has been in his own crib, so in his bassinet, on the side of our bed from day one and he will be transitioning over to the crib as soon as he is sleeping through the night. Just because Mike and I are ready to have our room back, R Riker and Kaya will be sharing the bedroom. It's like a shared nursery and Kaya still sleeps with us. She still sneaks into bed with us in the middle of the night. So I'm hoping like once Riker is in the room with her, she will be more likely to stay in the room. Um, we will see that it's another bridge and we'll cross it when we get to it. But that's when we're gonna transition is as soon as he is sleeping through the night next question is what did you or when did you know it was the right time to have kids and why did you feel you were ready so I've shared this in another one of my videos and we started trying to have kids after we got married right away because I had an OBGYN appointment the month after we got married like it was, I think it was like two weeks after we got married I had like a normal like lady checkup if you will um, and my OB at the time had told me that my endometriosis was, you know, slowly getting worse. And at the rate that it was 
um, increasing that I honestly only had about a 50-50 shot of ever having kids and um, if we were going to start trying now would be a really good time. And me having a family was more important to me at the time than anything else and Mike agreed. We decided that you know what we were ready as we would ever be. Our finances were in check for having a baby and um, yeah, we just kind of jumped right into it. Next question, were your kids planned? If so, how did you go about it? So I, I have kind of answered this in like a couple of my other answers um, just because I tend to ramble, but um, like I said before. So um, Mike and I always knew we wanted a family and when we were presented with that issue of um, a possible infertility issue, we decided to jump right into it and um, we were very lucky and it only took us five cycles to conceive our daughter and um, with our son like I had mentioned before we were planning on getting pregnant that year and not exactly in May that was kind of a surprise for us so you can see that Riker was a little bit of a surprise but he was planned for that year anyways so if I could pick one of the two ways I would say a surprise baby I mean as long as like you <laughs> you're like married you know you're like prepared for a baby I guess like how prepared are you for a baby really ever but I don't know I would say the surprise was a little bit more exciting it just was a lot more fun finding out the surprise way so instead of like you know negative after negative after negative test this just all of a sudden it was positive and I wasn't even expecting it it just was it was really exciting so I would say surprise baby is was better than planned for or like more exciting than planned for me but I loved um I don't know I just thoroughly like loved the process both times and I loved the newborn stage and we're still like we're just coming out of the newborn stage with Riker and I'm just still on cloud nine. Oh, having babies is the best <laughs> next question is how do you keep intimacy in your in your marriage um well you don't no I'm just kidding um, <laughs> have your getaway nights hire a nanny whatever you need to do we are very very lucky and we have grandma and grandpa so Mike's parents are right here in town and if we ever need a night off Mike's mom is more than willing to help out take the kids for us for a night so we can have like a night out really we just got lucky if you don't have access to grandparents though start reaching around you know start reaching around to your other mom friends see who they hire for a nanny or a babysitter have them come over and watch the kids for you so that you can have a night alone and if that's not possible just wait till the kids go to bed <laughs> I don't know that's a uh, that's what we do. And if the kids are sleeping with you, then why don't you go smooch in the bathroom? <laughs> okay, next question is, do you think that there is a stigma around the formula milk and the mothers who feed that way? Absolutely. I feel like there's a stigma around everything these days when it comes to motherhood. It is so hard to be a mom in general, but being a mom these days and being judged on every little thing you do because everybody's an expert, definitely difficult there's definitely a stigma you know I've thought so many times you know because eventually you know my, my milk supply is slowly drying up no matter what I've tried it seems that it's just drying up I've been working hand-to-hand -hand with my lactation consultant it's just like not getting anywhere um it's just kind of like plateauing which I will take I, I mean as long as I'm producing something for now but I think of the day where if I were to have to switch over to formula completely uh, it scares me because I feel like I'm going to be judged if I pull out a formula container in public and pour it into a bottle and shake it up. Am I going to be judged for that? I mean, I would be I would be being naive if I said no. That's not going to happen. More than likely, yes. Somebody is going to see me making a bottle for my child and is going to think, oh, why isn't she breastfeeding? But vice versa, if I were to go out and breastfeed in public right now, I mean, I would get probably like burned like, oh my gosh why are you showing your boobs and blah, blah, blah. it's just such a everything everything these days has a stigma around it as far as like parenting and motherhood my biggest advice is just stick to your guns and whatever the heck works for you do it who cares I mean if your baby is fed and happy who cares all right the kids are joining me for the end of this video <laughs> because once again I am momming it alone tonight 
Um, last question is, did you always know you'd have multiple children? Yes, I mean, again, God willing, I always prayed that I would be blessed with children and more than one child at that. I always knew I wanted like three or four kids. Oh, next question is from my friend Amanda. Morgano, can we go back to Mexico? Heck yes, let's go back to Mexico. Let's go. Hit me up, girl. We'll plan that trip. Bye. All right, guys, well, with that said, I have two very tired little kiddos who need to go to bed. So I'm gonna wrap up that Q&A here. If you guys liked this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Also give it a big thumbs up if you want me to do a get to know me video sometime in the future where I answer like 50 questions about myself um, and my life. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel before you guys leave. It is at absolutely no cost to you. It is free to hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so that you know every single time I upload a new video, which is usually Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And I will see you guys on Sunday for another really fun video. And this one's gonna be really fun because we're going on our first road trip. Ah, should you go to meet me and Papa's? Yeah. Go see Bryn and Lainey and Kenna? Yeah, we're gonna bring this too. Oh. If only you guys could see what she's holding right now. It's like a giant dollhouse. House. Oh, okay. See you guys Sunday. Bye. And I think to myself, what a wonderful What a wonderful world